Welcome everybody to today's webinar, Accelerating Agile in Regulated Environments with DevOps, X-Ray and Jira Snapshots. We're very excited to have you all here already. And uh, yeah, we're looking forward to a very interesting input from our friends and customers, uh, NEC Oncomology, who are with us today and our partner X-Ray, who supported us in this webinar. So, um, Having said that, just a quick housekeeping before we start off. As we stream live on LinkedIn, you have the option to chat with us. Um, we will hear from our friends about what they're doing. We will let them uh, talk through their presentation, but we'll have time afterwards to go into your questions. So feel free to post them whenever they come up to you and we'll get into those. Um, at the end of the webinar and hope we'll get through all of them. So please feel invited to use the chat function and uh, we're looking forward to hearing from you. Other than that, we just want to make you aware at the beginning that uh, we want to be respectful with everybody in the room. So if you use the chat function, please keep to human decency. I think um, we're all um, capable of doing that. That should be it from my side. I will hand over now to our CEO from Red Bee, Rina, who will introduce you to the topic and uh, show you a bit more about what this is going to be about today. So, Vina, hit it off. Hello, everyone. Thanks, Saskia. Thanks for everybody who is here. Um, I uh, uh, am frequently contacted by people in the pharmaceutical and medical technology industry who are very interested to go agile. Um, I'm active specifically in this area and I help regulated team become more agile. And, and that has become a very, very hot topic in recent years. And when people talk about agile, they frequently mention the need to do something that is called digital transformation, which is a, a buzzword in itself. Uh, and one of the purposes of this webinar today is to highlight the fact that Agile and digital transformation cannot really achieve their promised goal if you don't add a third ingredient to that, and that is DevOps. So DevOps is not a very new trend, but in my opinion, it still does not, did not catch as much attention as it should have in this world of agile digital transformation within regulated industries. And I think that actually specifically in areas where you need a lot of documentation and compliance, DevOps can help Agile achieve some of the promises that it wants to deliver. So I'll explain you a little bit what I think is the promise of Agile and digital transformation. You want to achieve a situation where your organization works in a flow. Each person and each team has their own task, their own area of expertise, but they're all progressing together in some kind of a sync, fluent motion toward one common goal. And this goal for most of my customers is either delivering a new product, releasing a new project version, installing uh, something new in the IT system. And once everyone reaches this point, we can have the business benefit we all look forward to and iterate. So then we can go into the cycle and deliver another version and another version. But the idea is that we all converge together and achieve the business benefit we hoped for. But in regulated environment, often, sorry. So in this effort to do digital transformation, a lot of the first efforts are going into automatic tests. And the reason to go for automatic tests is obvious. The test budget is huge for regulated systems. And there is any incentive on the planet to try to economize on that. So, People are investing a lot in building DevOps pipelines for automatic tests. And typically, in a normal situation, in a typical situation, 
the end of this pipeline is to generate a report. And a report is basically a file, JSON, XML, or what have you, that lies somewhere in your DevOps environment. The problem is that this file is not looking like a normal test report that an auditor will expect. It doesn't look anything like a release document or and is not connected to your traceability. So what people end up doing very often is that despite the fact that they have invested so much money in building the pipeline for an automatic test cycle, they go on and do a lot of manual tests as well. So these are the traditional manual verification tests. We all had them for ages and we continue to do them to the big part of it. And in these tests, we produce all the documentations that we need and even more documentation and all these pile of documentation actually burdens us. And instead of having this ideal flow, we end up having a flow that looks like something that we all converged into a version, but we cannot release it until we don't create this document and this document and do some more tests and another paperwork. And the dream of actually releasing it to our customers and ripening the business benefits out of it becomes more and more distant and actually disconnected from our flow. So what's the point of investing so much effort in creating agile flow with high velocity if at the end of this very high speed flow, you are basically stuck in a traffic jam. So what we want to show today is a test flow that also supports regulatory documentation needs. So create a flow that takes into account from the get-go everything that you need to create in terms of the documentation. And the tools we'll use is Jira software with X-Ray. And if you have been in that last ecosystem for a while, you cannot ignore X-Ray as the strongest and most sophisticated test management suite on, the, on this uh, platform. I've been a, a big supporter of X-Ray for many years, and it never failed me in regulatory context. And the release documentation will be used, will be generated inside Confluence with the extension of Jira Snapshot and Jira Traceability extensions. These are basically the ones who generate automatically the test reports directly from Jira and X-Ray. So, I'll now move to screen share. Okay, this is a real Confluence instance with an example of a test report, one that we can generate with the pipeline that we are going to share with you. So that's a, a normal Confluence page, but it has a very special table on it. This table is the table of tests and test execution that was automatically generated directly from JIRA and X-Ray. In a similar way, we can also generate the full traceability. Surely, if you keep all your functional requirements, user requirements, and test inside JIRA, again, with JIRA snapshots, you can generate the full traceability automatically within a few minutes inside Confluence. How we do that exactly, we'll show you at the very end after we have established the, uh, the fact or we have established the tools and the methods of how to get to the fact that all this information is already in JIRA. Okay, so what we basically want is to have a DevOps uh, setup that at the very end, when the test reports are generated, they are injected directly to JIRA. And by doing that, we basically leverage and make the most out of the efforts that we put into our automatic tests. And in the same place with JIRA and X-Ray, 
Whatever manual tests are left to be done, they can be done there and immediately from there taken into the reports. And of course, on top of uh, Atlassian X-ray and Jira snapshots, you should involve in this pipeline all your other DevOps tool. And in this example that we will show, we have involved GitHub and PyTest just because that's the technological infrastructure that has been already in use. So at this stage, I'm going to hand over this to my friends from NEC on Community. Uh, I've been working with Susanne for a while now, and uh, they're in NEC on Community. They are, they are really championing the transition of all their quality and compliance efforts into Atlassian. And Susanna has been taking it one process at a time. And in recent months, she decided to tackle the test management area. And she, jo she was joined in that effort with Frederick, and he has done such a brilliant work in tackling this uh, technological challenge that I'm super happy to have them here and tell us about their experience. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, Lina, and also for believing in our solution. Uh, that's really nice to hear. Um, we're from Elysium Community. I'm a product manager and I'm joined by Frederik, our principal software engineer. Um, before I dig into, into why we wanted to go this step of automating our tests uh, and as well as the solution we have implemented, just wanted to give some background of our company and the NEC Immune Profiler product that we are uh, focusing on. So NEC on Community, we are in an AI-driven biotech company. Uh, we offer proprietary machine learning software that predicts new antigens um, uh, that are immunogenic and that can be used for personalized cancer immunotherapy, as well as infectious disease vaccines. We are a relatively small company, a bit over 20 people uh, in Oslo, Norway, but we're part of this bigger NEC corporation, the Japanese owned, owned uh, company uh, with, uh, with companies or subsidiaries all over the globe. And then the product that I'm the manager for uh, and where we have focused uh, our efforts right now is the NEC Immune Profiler. That's an AI-based uh, software medical device that uh, from next generation sequencing data predicts um, antigens that are naturally processed uh, and presented on the tumor uh, cell surface as those are targets for personalized cancer vaccines. It's uh, mainly written in Python and it integrates several machine learning uh, models. Uh, and as we are a, a software medical device, we follow IEC 6304. That's the software lifecycle for medical device software. And that comes with uh, certain regulatory requirements, especially around our technical documentation and the, and the development lifecycle of the product. Um, so with that in mind, why did we want to go the step of actually automating our tests and then starting with the verification tests into JIRA X-Ray. So we already had used JIRA and, and the Atlassian suite, uh, but not for, for this automation effort. Um, we kind of saw this problem where we had uh, development testing detached from verification testing. So there were separate activities, very much in, in, in line with what uh, Rina described uh, earlier. So in our development, we had many automated tests. We had a unit tests covering all of the code as well as um, integration tests that run every time we commit the changes in our code. But then these were not used in the actual final technical documentation, either because they didn't have enough traceability, not enough details in the reports, uh, hadn't followed the exact workflow, etc. Um, and then on the other hand, we had that final verification test cycle that had a, a lot of manual tests, which is then slow and taking up a lot of our resources. We're not that many people. And then for many weeks, all we did was running verification tests. 
which maybe would have been fine if we saw the value, but a lot of what we test in that final verification test cycle, we had already covered in our previously run automatic tests, but we couldn't use those reports. Um, so we basically repeated a lot of the steps just in a manual and slow way. And then finally, of course, then setting that up, reusing what we had run for previous releases or changing that was a tedious job. And then what we saw, it was often done very late in our development cycle. So a long time after actually implementing the changes and being very aware of what happened, we had to go back and update the test long after, which again slowed down the final release cycle. Um, so our goals for the automatic verification tests were to still have the tests close to the code as our existing automated tests were, but get enough detailed reports and follow that traceability and have that, that confidence in our quality that it can be used in the technical documentation. So then we could still update them at the same time as we actually implemented the cha changes, which is then the more agile way to work and re reuse what we already had in those automatic tests. We have full confidence that our software is well tested, so why not then actually use those results in the technical documentation as well. And then of course, the other big goal is to minimize the manual labor it will take at the end of the release cycle, same time there. So, so less manual steps and, and save time. You can't get rid of, of all manual testing, but uh, up to a certain point. And then for the actual solution, I will actually hand it over to Fredrik, our principal software engineer. Thanks. Yeah, so if we look at the next slide uh, here. Yeah, so basically what we're doing is to, to uh, like, like our solution works in a way that we are able to organize the tests inside the Jira interface, familiar interface there, and then trigger it from the UI, and then uh, run it remotely on GitHub, and then uh, view the results back in, in the UI. And this uh, basically consists of like two main points. Which are like uh, yeah, Jira and GitHub. Yeah. So next. <laughs> so and 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 this is basically how it looks, right? Uh, test cases are organized under a test execution, which typically can like describe a component or or uh, or some some part of of the system we want to test. And uh, each test case is typically linked to like a, a software requirement. Yeah. And uh, once we have organized those in, in our test execution, we uh, see uh, how we are able to trigger them. These are like the automation triggers that we can, uh, we'll talk some more about later. Yeah. And uh, after some variable amount of time, the test will run and, and uh, the results will come reported back into the, into the UI in a, in a neat way like this. Mm. And for each uh, test that has been run, we are able to attach different types of evidence and also, yeah, for example, the log output and yeah, standard out and, or, or any others, but also like the actual test code that was run is also attached as, as evidence uh, that we get to see in this same test case in, inside Jira. Yeah, and uh, now to dive a little bit into how we actually achieve this. So first we'll look at the, um, the automation aspect of it. Um, in this uh, same interface, we saw that you would be able to trigger it. You can see there's a button that's called manage automations. And this is really just Jira automations. So, so this is uh, vanilla and Jira in a way. Yeah, so if we look uh, at what happens, uh, you, you, you get into this dialogue that lets you define um, certain, you know, actions or, or, or um, uh, for example, in this case, it's an API call that's sent to GitHub that's uh, being triggered when you press this button. You're able to like also configure like fil filters and, and conditions. And uh, for example, in this case, this, this will be shown for, for uh, test executions. So here we, we set up, you know, the data we want to send out in, in, in the custom data field. Uh, we basically send the test execution ID. And also, um, yeah, of course, you need to authenticate somehow to, to GitHub. 
which is uh, how you get like, uh, in this case, we use personal access token. Long term, we want to go uh, switch to GitHub, um, GitHub apps for auth authenticating. But you basically have to, to enter like bearer space and then your personal access token into this authentication field. And then just finally make, just make note of this dispatches um, part of the URL that will call the GitHub uh, API uh, that goes into like the next, uh, next uh, picture here. Yeah, so if you now look at what happens on the GitHub side, uh, once it receives the request, like the workflow dispatches uh, part that we saw earlier, this is the, the GitHub Actions workflow file that runs the test on a GitHub Actions runner. So the on close here is like, yeah, it's trigger. Uh, and it's the way we were able to trigger from the, the API as we saw previously. Yeah, uh, next we, uh, we will look at uh, the way we actually get uh, the list of tests to run. Because it's a um, yeah I can uh, next screen here yeah because we basically have to implement ourselves to one one thing is we have so we get uh, we get the test execution ID from the API call but uh, then you need to also fetch the list of tests so this is some some custom integration we had to do in order to get the list of tests tests to be to be run um, yep yeah. next one um, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so basically uh, running the test then uh, takes that um, list of test cases and passes them as an argument to the long PyTest command we see here. Uh, it gets both the test execution ID and also the, the te test case keys. And we have uh, like a, a, a neat way for us to organize this was to, to have it as a target in a make file in order to, to be able to more cleanly inter interact with, uh, with this command. All right, so um, yeah, we, we used a plugin like the PyTest Jira X-Ray plugin. Uh, it takes away a lot of uh, you know, com configurating like how the reports are being generated and, and also posting them to the, to the X-Ray API. We were initially doing a lot of that ourselves, but uh, this plugin simply uh, makes a lot of it, takes a lot of it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's basically, for Python, it's basically, a, it, as far as I can see, like a clone of what's being already available for, for Java. That's the official one. And uh, this Python version is, is made by a, a third party developer. But well, one thing I will just say that just notice the way that uh, we mark these tests so whenever we, for example, use the mark.xray Jira one, then that test is associated with that Jira issue key. So that's how we are able to, to generate the reports and, and, and so on. Yeah, exactly. So, so one thing is to associate the test uh, with the report, uh, which is what the plugin does for us. But um, what we also had to do ourselves was to actually implement some filtering mechanism because we have a lot of long running tests and it's not necessarily given that we want to run every test each time. So, so uh, yeah, we basically had to override uh, a, a Python method here for uh, to add add the option and also implement a Python hook, Pytest uh, hook, to basically filter the tests once once Pytest is running. Yeah, and let's look at a uh, little bit more how we import uh, evidence. So um, yet another uh, custom uh, integration we did was to um, to add uh, additional evidence because the, out of the box, the plugin handles kind of the, the generation of the report and uploading the report to the API. Um, but we, in addition, wanted to also have evidence. So that is also doable by, by operating. Uh, in, our, in our case, we were working with Python and PyTest. So we had to like override the, the, uh, the make, PyTest make report uh, hook. Uh, um, in order to attach the test code and the, uh, the log outputs, which will together serve as, as evidence for, for, for the actual run, in, in addition to like the asserts, which then sets the status right to the, to the final report. 
Yeah, so in summary, all right, this is the steps that were were needed to implement what we wanted, which was to from the X-ray UI uh, trigger uh, tests and then receive the results in the same UI. So in summary, we used like Jira uh, X-ray and the PyTest Jira X-ray plugin, which offloaded a lot of uh, implementation work for us. And uh, some CI system, in our case, we use GitHub Actions. I'm sure it's uh, equally uh, easy to, to make work with other systems as well. Uh, we did have to use some custom integrations in order to be able to achieve like uh, more custom evidence attachments. Uh, and also uh, one functionality we implemented that we didn't use yet is to actually control the statuses of the test run so you can more granularly like set the status of a, of a test inside X-ray. So, so, so that, that uh, could be nice as well. Yeah, and finally, we, uh, we uh, feel we feel happy <laughs> with the outcome of this uh, you know, initial exploration of, of X-ray and what it could do for us because yeah, we, uh, we are, were able to achieve what we wanted in terms of uh, triggering and, and viewing results and reporting in, in the X-ray UI, very nice. And also one big win is that we actually, we're actually saving a lot of time uh, in terms of uh, doing it uh, this way, because manual tests re would require a, 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 you know, a multiple manual runs of our software, which can take, uh, in some cases, multiple hours. So, uh, so yeah, we do save a lot of time and effort and, and feel that this will help us uh, you know, more, more robustly verify the, their software requirements. All right, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Frederick and Susanne, for this uh, excellent uh, presentation and excellent work. You really run with it uh, in a very skillful manner. Thanks. So the work uh, that Frederick described brings us to this uh, situation where the automatic tests end up reported in exactly the same platform where we can do the manual tests. And this allows us to uh, bring everything together in one single report. And let us now uh, see it again in Confluence and go into the details there. So back to our test report. Uh, in this test report, I chose to show the type of report. And you can see that we have a GAL 54, which is a generic unstructured. This is a X-ray way to say that this is an automatic test, along with a test that is manual and in steps. So whatever types of report you have, you can bring them into X-ray, manage them there, and then get them into the uh, test report itself. Uh, I will. Uh, show how this report is actually generated. So if we open this link, this is how the test is in JIRA. Um, and uh, when you look into the test details in JIRA, you'll see test run. So for all people who are less familiar with uh, X-Ray, X-Ray has the concept of actually having the test and as a separate entity, each time that this test is being executed, it is documented as a test run. So this test, for example, was ex executed for distinct occasions uh, against version two. So this is the version of our product and we want to mention it during the test. And these four executions were picked up in our uh, test report. So if we open it here, so the test report brought all these test execution here, along with the information that is really X-ray information. Uh, you can be more selective about what, uh, what information is brought, but you have to define this once inside Confluence. And once you have this definition, each time that you just press the button here for take a new snapshot, Confluence uh, or Jira snapshots rather, uh, does all the heavy lifting for you, goes to Confluence, goes to JIRA and X-Ray, gathers the information and builds the, the report. 
And happily, this report does not require Frederic or people in his level of technical expertise. It's really just a matter of no code configuration. I'll edit the page to show you a little bit behind the scene how this is happening. So the whole test report is one usage of the JIRA snapshot macro. This macro is added to, the, to Confluence as soon as you install the app. And to configure what actually we see in this uh, snapshot, there is a interface. And the first level of our report are the tests. And there is here a search clause. So this is a JQL for people who are a little bit more familiar with JIRA. This is the way that JIRA natively allows you to search. So we search here for all the tests that are inside the project GAL and which correspond with fixed version 2.0. And we do that exactly in the same language that you would do that in, in JIRA. So if I just open a window for JIRA, this is the native search window in JIRA. You search exactly using the same language and you retrieve exactly the scope that you want. So basically, JIRA snapshots uses exactly the same uh, the same. Uh, a mechanism to search inside JIRA. And the fields that you can add here are any field that exists in your JIRA. So we support the, the custom fields that are native in your JIRA. The second level is a specific level that knows to get test runs. And here comes really the deep integration that we have that the JIRA snapshot has with X-Ray. We go into the test run level and we can select which test runs we want actually to bring. And here I just selected for all the test runs that are applicable for the fixed version I'm interested in. I can do more filtering here. And the fields that are brought are again fields that I can select. And these are X-ray native fields. And that's the power of X-ray and JIRA as platforms for these type of activity is the fact that you, they give you the whole envelope of API that allows to achieve this type of integration. So this type of integration does not do anything that is illegal or unsupported officially. We, uh, Jira Snapshots really goes through supported and official routes to get this data, gather it, and bring it into, uh, into Confluence. And the nice thing about it is, is that you define this report once at the beginning of your project, even before you have a single test, you already know your data structure and what you want to achieve. You set this up and as the, the project progresses, each time you are interested to see how you are doing in terms of this report, you just click the button as I did now. Um, something magic happens behind the scene. The data is retrieved here and presented and uh, you know exactly where you are in terms of documentation. And this is part of your built-in flow. Uh, and the same principle holds exactly when you want to, full the full, to build the full traceability. The full traceability is defined exactly in the same way, but this time you don't have two level reports, you have four level reports, and you start all the way from the user requirements and yes, our user requirements in this particular case is handled in JIRA. So if you manage these, all your traceability items in JIRA, you have the benefit of reaping the reward on the documentation side. You basically can create your traceability in a very easy way. And you see the whole, whole um, secret sauce here is to manage the data correctly inside JIRA. So you have user requirements and as, as an issue type in JIRA and it traces down into two functional specification. And this is the relationship that JIRA snapshots basically picks up here. And if you uh, build your uh, infrastructure like this, what you end up having is a flow that is not looking like this nightmarish scenario, but something that looks like that. So basically, really in regulated environment, the real flow that you can hope for 
is a flow where your documentation needs are actually supported and catered as part of your flow. And surely at any, whatever optimization we do along the way, there will be a tiny bit of documentation that can only generate it at the very end. So at the very end, like uh, Susanne mentioned, they still have manual tests that they need to do. They cannot avoid it entirely. But this burden has been reduced so dramatically that it can be more manageable, it's a smaller load, and it gives everybody more predictability and brings the flow much closer to the point that it actually brings business value. Thank you. This is, uh, this is basically all the presentation. I think that now we can uh, move on to questions. If yeah, thank you to the three of you to letting us know every little detail of your secret sauce there. Um, we did actually get some questions and I want to get into them quickly. Um, I'll try to bundle them up uh, if there are redundancies, also looking at the time so we can get as much covered as you asked for. And uh, maybe first, uh, let's get into a question that uh, dealt with the test cases in x-ray. We got questions uh, from the nature of, okay, how, how do you write those test cases? Do you write them for every unit or do you only do them for integration tests? Are they reusable for regression testing? How does all of that? Uh, work together. Maybe Frederick and Susanne, you can go into that. How does that work for you? Yeah, that that is a very good question. We've actually discussed that quite a lot. Um, we are starting out this this implementation now, so we are focusing on our verification tests. So those are the ones directly covering our requirements. But we did see that those are very related to our existing integration tests. So those tests we already had for integration tasks with some tweaking that Frederick uh, uh, tackled, um, those were the ones we now converted into, into this automated system. Some unit tests are for critical um, implementation, let's say, maybe bug fixes, etc. So those could also be then applicable for this verification test phase. Uh, but we are kind of learning on the way and then hoping to expand this even more. But right now the level we are at is, is for the requirements and the verification test, which is very linked to the integration test, as well as the, um, uh, some of our user tests would be running the command line interface. Those also would be very applicable here for covering the requirements. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Building up on that, who's actually writing those unit tests? Is it, uh, and who triggers the execution in the end? Is it the programmer? Is it a separate tester? Whose job is it, so to speak? Um, also a good question. Uh, and I would say both. Uh, so so the workflow we, we want to have and, and try to have is that you write tests as you update the code. So that would be the developers and then to also trigger them to make sure these are covered. But then uh, the managing of the X-ray setup in that way with the traceability, that's a collaboration with the product manager and the developers. Uh, and then, you know, to, in the end, to make sure you have that traceability, if things are set up, but actually not run on the latest version, etc., that would be one click from, in our case, me, without me needing um, domain knowledge about whichever component we're focusing those tests on. So, so I would say a collaboration. Um, and actually this is then kind of helping compared to what we had before when the developers only focused on, on the tests in the code. And I was, I mean, I'm being a bit, a bit on point here, but then I was kind of stuck with the verification tests, but not really knowing the code. Uh, so now those worlds are, are a lot closer. Uh, to answer from other, other people's perspective, I see different approaches to that question. Uh, I would say an ideal situation would be that the developers develop the unit test as part of the story, basically, but then that there is enough expertise in the team and capacity, and that often is a 
testers. So there are a lot of software testers nowadays that know how to write integration tests and automatic tests, etc. It's actually a skill that somehow grew in that community as well. Uh, but uh, but yes, Susanne Susanne's team is is rather small. So that's that's what she has, and and she's making the most out of it, and that's good. Uh, but in larger team, we see a growing team of uh, automatic test developers. Mm. Which leads me over to another question, because we uh, have the comment of one uh, visitor saying, like, in terms of testing in a regulated environment, he can imagine three categories that come to his mind. First is manual system testing. Second is automated system testing. And the third one is continuous integration testing. You quickly touched on it. His qu question is, the solution we just presented, we just talked about in the last half an hour, does this also cover the automated and the continuous integration testing? What's your take on that? How can that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah like our uh, as, as Susan said, like uh, we well, well, we view this as a diff different process. So this is not UD testing. This is not integration testing. This is verification testing, right? And specifically, it's our shot at automating the verification tests that were done manually earlier. So, uh, but as Susanna said earlier, it's like, yeah, it, it would be really nice if we were able to actually reuse a lot of the, for example, integration tests for this purpose. But uh, in, in also in large part, we have like, um, basically been running like uh, the command line commands from the Python, like from the test code that you would run as a manual tester. So it's like a, a, like a programmatic run of the system that we're testing and then assertions as you would in a normal test. But, uh, but yeah, we, I, I'd say it's an automated verification test. Mm. Uh, the way I, I see this question and the presentation is that there are two orthogonal problems here. One problem is how to automate your tests. And that is a question of your product and the type of test that you want to run on your product, not in terms of automatic versus non-automatic, but really if you needed to test your product, how, what is the best way to test it? Is it uh, through API? Is it through screen uh, sequences? Uh, and there are zillions of different technologies, and the best one really depends on your product and what, how, how is the best way to test it. And then there is the other question of if you did invest in automatic tests and you have a platform to run these automatic tests, how do you make sure that the output can then be used for documentation purposes? And that's what we showed today. So we, we answered the second question. We did not go into the technical details of what is the best way to test your specific device or your specific product. Yeah, and then, then as a final thing to add, one of the reasons why they can be difficult to marry, the continuous integration and the verification tests, uh, at least in our case, is that uh, for our verification testing, we want to use a real life uh, sized data set that covers all the cases that would happen uh, like naturally, while that's not really uh, the best approach for continuous integration as that can take several hours um, uh, and that would then slow down things so our continuous integration is more more of a smoke test with smaller data sets and then the final verification that's when we can use the bigger data sets to actually have that that formal test of the code but also this shows that they're very related the same type of test can be used but then then the test case would be a bit differently so i think like Anna said looking looking at how to best test your software that's very different from from case to case We got two questions about what are you, uh, how do you make sure what you're doing is actually the right thing? And uh, one of those actually goes into the validation of your tool chain. A person, uh, the person uh, referring to the ESO norm 13485, did you also validate the tool chain in that regard? 
so I think that Suzanne, uh, they will uh, correct me, but at the moment they have still not arrived to the stage that they need to validate. It's, uh, it's still early days for them. Generally speaking, it can be validated. So if you are in a scenario, a GXP scenario or ISO 13485 scenario, as you mentioned, uh, you can validate it. And of course you need to validate it as part of your tool validation. Great. So maybe to finish it off, because we're running to the end of our time, um, we have one question. Can you go a little bit into more detail on how you link the actual X-ray test to the unit test with regard to the trigger? How do you make sure that these are actually executed in the right environment and the right version? How, how does that happen? How do you make sure of that? Right. Yeah, so... Um... Yeah, I, I guess I mentioned it briefly, but just like this uh, plugin that uh, I think it's called like PyTest Extra Jira X Ray or something. Yeah. So it it adds. It's basically a PyTest plugin that adds functionality for marking your. Topic. So in terms of yeah, we're, we're we're I wouldn't call them unit tests. It's more like end to end, like more like integration tests uh, at the moment. But uh, this has some flexibility in terms of you can both choose to have you know many different unit tests cover one like X-ray test, or you could potentially also do the other way that you have one testing code that uh, satisfies many, many different X-ray tests, and this plugin allows for both, and this is uh, handled through the uh, the mark. Uh, that uh, it's basically an annotation that you you can annotate the the code with uh, either a single or a list of of extra basically Jira keys. That is your issue, like test cases that you associate with the test code. And I guess this this I, I, I briefly glanced at the Java version of this plugin, and it it uh, it works the same way. So do some okay. annotation, yeah. Wow, great. Thanks for wrapping it up again and going through all the questions with us. Susanne, Frederick, thank you very much for being here with us today. Uh, thank you very much for giving us a little peek into uh, the magic that happens with, in your um, endeavor, so to say. Um, yeah, thank you everybody for being here, for watching this, for uh, interacting with us through your questions. Um, and uh, I guess I speak for everybody when I say we're really looking forward to the next one when we can uh, talk again, maybe with you too, how it's going, how it has evolved um, further down the road. And also, yeah, thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for agreeing to do this. Thank you, everyone out there for watching and uh, thank you. talk to you soon. Okay. Bye. Thanks Thank you for having us. Bye. Bye.